Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft, and I'm torn at the moment, peeps. I'm torn about what to do. I've got a lot of inspiration for two projects. One of them is to build another game in this area, and the other one is to do some building back at my base, and I just don't know what's going to happen. So we're going to start off over here, and I'll show you a little job that's kind of unfinished that I'm working on. You see, I've been over the season working on this area, making it look cool. And currently what I'm trying to do is get rid of the last of the mycelium in this area. And I'm doing that using a method that we did earlier in the season. So if you have watched all of the season, you'll probably remember this. Back on my base, a giant island covered in mycelium. I uh, decided to cover all of that mycelium with water. And then when the sun goes down and it is night time that mycelium will turn into dirt and so we're going to cover all of this right here and that will allow the grass at the top to spread down to all of this dirt um, once the water has been removed right that is at least the plan for now and I thought that I would do that on this little bit of land over here because it's rather large it would be pretty tedious to remove a big chunk like this as removing it is what we've been doing over in the other spaces. So over on this side you'll see that there isn't any mycelium but there are mushrooms left behind and I've been growing them in deliberately and now we've been considering on live streams where I've been working on a lot of this that we should extend these mushrooms down this border over here and have them just go around the outside of this area which I think is a pretty cool idea, right? Um, as we walk over here you may notice that the tangler is now on its own little island because I have removed a lot of the mycelium from around here as well and it's got a cool little pathway that we worked on as well this path obviously leads up to the corner of this beacon area and then we've simply just taken what was going on on the inside and extended it all the way across here and that's a really nice entrance to get into the tangler in my opinion so that worked out really well we ripped out all of the mycelium down this side as well and now I'm just thinking about how I can make it all look a little bit different you know and that was me attempting to uh, to fly let's try that again no, is it going to be one of those days? What's my ping like? My ping looks okay. That generally doesn't make too much of a difference for me this season. I always have a hard time getting up in the air. Um, if we drop ourselves down just over on the left in the little brown area right here, bam, um, you can see that's where all the mycelium was. So we have removed a heck of a lot of it. But now what we're going to do is focus on this bit here. Now, I don't want to be too optimistic, but I believe that might be it. No, um, there's that block there. And then I believe that that might be it. I'm waiting for the next one to pop out. Nope, I think we got them all. So I've gone around and covered up tons of this. I'll tell you what I haven't really done, though. Over the end here, we need to dig like a trench or a border. I'm going to transform all of this stuff over here as well, but I'm going to be tearing it out to create a new game in this area. So somewhere along here, we need a border uh, where it can't spread from one side to the other, and so that's probably going to be just right here. Yes. Anyway, the, the sun is lowering. It's soon going to turn to night time, and we're going to let all of the mycelium die, and then when it comes back up again, it will be daytime. We'll remove all of the water, which might be a little bit tricky because there are a lot of water source blocks all over the place, and then hopefully the grass will start spreading. So the night has passed by and I've been thinking, what is our strategy here? Well, um, sponges would be a very good tool for us to use. And over here I had to put up these dirt walls because the light from the sea lanterns was coming through and stopping the mycelium from turning into dirt at night time. So when we go and slap these sponges down, what I'm expecting to see happen is some of the mycelium start spreading out from little pockets that we missed. And another thing that I also want to do is get in here and put down some like cedar grass blocks in the middle so it can all start spreading rather quickly. So that's kind of the plan for now. Sometimes we'll do it like this where I know exactly where the source block is. And aha, you see, we're going to run into problems like this quite frequently. There is mycelium there because there is a light source that I have forgotten about. Um, you are just a single source block, right? So all of this will spread away and then I've got to deal with this manually.
Okay then, everything seems to be good. We're dealing with a uh, much smaller area than I've done in the past and I don't think there's any mycelium outbreaks, at least that I can see. I've been putting down lots of cedar grass so it can start spreading all over and I believe we're now fit to leave it like this for a while in the, in the sunshine and the grass will spread all over the place. Like I said, haven't seen any mycelium breaking out anywhere, which is generally what you want to worry about because then it will take over some of the dirt. Uh, but the grass is, always, is also spreading here as well, so that's good. And while I've been doing this, I've been thinking about what do I want to do this episode, and we are actually going to go ahead and work on a game over here. Um, we'll go back to the base later on in the episode. There's some stuff over there that I want to talk about. But right now what we're going to focus on doing is creating yet another game in this area. The story of this game is something that I'll tell a little bit later because it does have a story. Um, but it is going to start in this orange area and it is going to start with a tower that goes upwards and across. And I'm sort of picturing the structure. It's going to be actually quite similar to what Mumbo's done over here. And sort of keeping with the playful, colourful feel of this area. Uh, but then it will make its way over into this space. And you can see I've started to rip out uh, the mycelium. I've been putting in some blue over here like we just did in that space. That's actually a really small area. And I don't think blue's really been done anywhere else. So that's the colour that I chose. And now I'm starting to think that this is getting pretty high up. And I feel like this needs to come with it. So what we're going to do is probably maybe push that back a couple more blocks. But I think now what we'll do is we'll start to build up this section and have the blue stagger into a new area that's slightly higher up or maybe make it a different color uh, but otherwise we end up with a big ugly wall over there and so this thing is basically going to raise itself up and then its border is going to be right up against the side of where we have all of this grass and I should probably do another check just to make sure no mycelium is getting anywhere so this strange little mushroom cow wandered over to me and told me its name its name is uh, Cow Clown Hmm, <laughs> I don't remember that being renamed. There's actually a couple of them wandering around here. But anyway, um, I need to go back to the base to pick up some materials for finishing building this. And when we're over there, I want to talk about some other stuff. So I thought I'd show you as far as I've got. We're going to have this big area up here, which I think I might actually change from blue and keep the moldy color thing going. And as well as that, we're going to have an area over here. Now, these are mostly going to foster like support struts for what I'm going to be building up in the sky. Um, but this is sort of the area Area that we're going to take over with this project we're going to be going from the orange over the top of the red and the brown into the blue area and I have this idea that the very end of the thing that I'm uh, building could go down underground through the middle of this and come out into that area and this could be like the exit but that'll make more sense once I've explained what it is so we're gonna head back to the base we're gonna get some supplies and talk about some stuff when I'm over there so we are back here to gather some supplies, but before we get to that, there was a couple of tiny little things that need doing on the inside of the base. For example, this right here, this little room was just a janky old hole that hadn't been decorated. It's a tiny bit of work, but it's actually one of the very last things that needs doing in our base. So much so that I believe we can now say that the interior of the base is actually complete and finished. And I've made a little memento for that because it is episode 704. And as you can see here, it says interiors finished. Interiors finished. The reason it's a ender chest, by the way, is because we were doing it during a live stream and I broke an ender chest and that was a derp. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's been labeled as. So I want to gather some supplies, things we're going to need for building. One of those things is the end rod. I wanted to check the recipe and see if you got four for one. You do. Excellent. So this will end up being more than enough for our end rod supplies. I've got all the other building materials in here. Um, this is more than enough of what we need. And the other thing we're going to be using as well is packed ice. And we've got a crazy amount of it here. However, there is a good chance we might actually burn for all of that and need some more. Um, also, Sass is patrolling the base. On you go, Sass. You do your thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so over here, we need some orange dye because the building material we're going to use for this is concrete powder. And it's going to be matching um, the, the theme of that area, which started off with orange, right? That's where I said it was going to begin. So we're going to take some of our red dye, some of our yellow, turn it into orange. We've got loads of that, so we don't need to worry about it. And somewhere, I should have a shulker box full of the sand and gravel we need for the uh, the powder that would appear to be it probably more than enough so if we take that with us we'll be making lots of orange concrete 
And I guess what I want to do is just fill one of these up with a whole bunch of dies as well. Alright, so we are back with our crazy amount of supplies for doing this. I got uh, more than enough dies sorted out in here. And we'll make the concrete over here. We'll probably do it in the water because uh, that little machine back at my base. So I don't want to keep flying back and forth. But anyway, I've just been thinking about how am I going to build this. We're going to start off with a tower made out of those uh, orange concrete blocks right in the middle of here going high up into the sky. The thing is, I don't know how high I should go. And actually what I should probably be doing is building this in reverse. So <laughs> let's get these two platforms here finished up and then I'll show you exactly how this game that we're building here is going to work. Cow Clown, my friend, you have picked uh, a bad place to roam into as this area is now cut off from everything else. As you can see, I'm building in this space and uh, now it's completely cut off, poor little fella. Ladies and gentlemen, a momentous occasion is about to take place on the Hermitcraft server. My 111,000th, 111th minute. And, uh, <laughs> it might not be here just yet. Hey, there it goes. Happy 111,111th minute thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've had my eye on that for a while. So I've got a story to tell you. Uh, quite some time ago, a couple of months ago, I had an idea for an ice boat racing game that I was going to build here on the server, actually kind of in this location as well. And eventually I decided against it, but I resurrected the idea on my Let's Play Minecraft Together server, showed it to the community, loads of people came in and built their own tracks as well, and it turned out to be pretty amazing and pretty fun. I'm actually going to show you what I'm talking about from that server in a little bit. It is going to be epic, trust me. Um, but I want to make something very clear. This is not this sort of ice boat boat race where you have a wide track and you sort of go around in a loop and race other players right this is a technical challenge this is about controlling the boat in a, a, like a slimmer environment with obstacles and things to go around and it's about racing the clock it's like a time trial game so what I've done is I've started off by building the last part of it because we're actually going to build this track in reverse so we can kind of uh, keep track of how big the whole project is going to be. So it starts over here and one of the things I'd actually like to change first of all is this. I think what we should do is have um, this trim sort of go all the way around the edge here and you can see that I've used some iron trap doors to hold up the blocks. Uh, now the ice when it's too wide like this is pretty tricky to navigate and I want to avoid doing this. We want it to be at least three wide at all times otherwise it's not very fun. Uh, but this last bit here should be relatively easy. We go in a straight line and we go down over to this little platform. Um, what we'll probably do is have this extend upwards and these will be support pillars for something that is going to be up above as this track is going to wrap and weave and wind its way all around the place. Um, there are blocks here because you would turn faster if you went round the ice like that and you go a little bit slower over that bit. It's a slight challenge however the last bit of this track really isn't about any other challenge other than getting yourself through the two wide bit on your boat. So then it gets very simple you've got to turn here you've got to turn there and this is going to be the finishing line right there. Man, the green grass is uh, looking great over here. You can see one little bit of mycelium managed to get out there. And down the bottom, we've still got a little bit of transformation to do. But uh, yeah, having the green grass is so much nicer in this area. And you'll see here that I've done a little bit more building. That's because we're building this thing in reverse. And one of the key things you're going to see in this game that we're building is drop downs. And that's because they can be kind of tricky to navigate. So let's hop up there, we're going to throw down a boat and I'm going to show you what it is I'm talking about. At several points in this game there are going to be holes to drop down. Maybe sometimes it's a multiple choice and this can actually be a little bit trickier than you think, especially if you approach it with speed and at an angle. And Generally what happens in this game is you hit the walls a lot and you don't particularly go down the middle of a track. So you quite often end up having to turn around and it can be a little bit... It, more difficult than it looks but we'll have these drop downs and that's how you get to the to the next area so in building this hi by the way hi <laughs> in building this I thought it looked kind of odd that you see the packed ice sitting on top of this right you'd expect it to go straight up but that is going to be a common thing that you'll see here otherwise we will end up using tons and tons of orange concrete we kind of want to be 
careful with our resources here so we don't spend tons and tons of time gathering them and more time building it because I could do that and then I could come around the front here and start to hide it but then it costs a ridiculous amount of orange materials yeah anyway I'm getting a little bit off track here what I want to do next is show you a full track from the let's play Minecraft together server so let's hop over there and you can see one of these in action so you may see just a, a giant jumble of blocks and lots of packed ice it might be tricky to digest but these are actually tracks and the tracks are lined with different colors this was part of my concept that I wanted to build my own track and then let other people come in and build some tracks as well so each of them are marked with their own unique color and my one is the blue one right here and I'm going to show you this section of the track because it shows off some of the challenges that I tried to create now these are just simple straightforward ideas um, I think of something and then I implement it so here there is a drop down where you can potentially hit different blocks on the way down and not get down as quickly so that's one thing then we have these big open turns with regular blocks in the middle so you will go slower over these blocks but faster on the outside turn and you also may hit the edge as well so it's a bit of a choice and a little bit of skill the more you play this you'll probably get a little bit better of it uh, we do have a multiple choice drop down here which puts you on three different paths which will lead to this one over here and then you can see more little challenges that I've added and anyway the idea was to create this and then let other people get involved so I picked uh, a big open area that everyone could build into and at the very top I built this little walkway where other players could come and get involved and then build their own and the players have come on here and built loads of wonderful tracks it's been really really fun playing them and so I picked out a track that I haven't actually played before which is this one right here the green one so we're gonna give it a whirl and I can show you what playing this game is like so Tom Johans boat track thank you for participating Tom I looking forward to playing this one there's some really cool stuff on it first of all fence post in the way so you bump into it um, that's an obstacle we might use then we've got this one right here so you hit one things on the way down I find it's easier to play this game with F5 on by the way um, just so you can look a little bit further around yourself so we've got to avoid the first two drop gaps and I have not managed to do that so let's backtrack this is a cool little idea I don't think I'm gonna do this in mine I think I'm gonna make mine uh, a linear track however in this one you have to backtrack a little bit and try it again so let's go forwards and up nope this thing's gonna be a little bit tricky isn't it okay let's dash then turn and sprint and we've made it over wow okay that was that was much better oh and then let's drop down yeah falling through those holes is tricky I was trying to make that clear wasn't I and then you've got these regular blocks to slow you down a little bit sometimes that can actually be useful especially if you're coming up to a turn it can help a lot right and then let's just gently glide 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 we're not gonna go down there fast excellent and then we've got to do the same thing again can we just yeah, sometimes it feels like perhaps taking your time with these things is the way to get a better score. Now this part of the track, it gets a little bit narrower. And you might remember me commenting on how the last part of our track happens to be too wide. And I'm not so keen on that. Well, it's because you hit the walls a lot. And I guess it's a level playing field for anyone who wants to play. And skill will probably come involved uh, with that. So I don't think there's actually anything wrong with it being narrow. It's just something that I don't particularly prefer playing. Although this one's actually pretty good. You've got to think a little bit ahead about how you're maneuvering your boat and not going too fast, etc. And I've missed the hole again, jeez. I should also mention that the end rods are a thing that we're going to do to light it up. And there appears to be a pigment in the way. Well, that's something we're not really going to have trouble with in the overworld, I guess. Um, but yes, we'll be lighting everything up with end rods. And that was a really cool track. I very much enjoyed it. Now we've got to get back on Hermitcraft and build our own one. I thought I'd mention it just in case you're out of the loop. I have another series on my channel, there's Survival Minecraft, although that's with lots of extra survival based features called Let's Play Minecraft Together where I play with my patrons and that was the server that we are just on. So if you're interested in that series and you haven't caught wind of it before, I'll put a link to the first episode of that series in the description box down below, which is a long one as it goes through all of the custom special features that we put on there. Uh, but anyway, right now I'm getting geared up to do some more building as you can see. And this isn't terribly slow, but it's a little bit janky. I think it might be a cool idea to set up a little redstone contraption in this area to help us with this process. But before we get to that, I want to show you what I have built as I've got a complete section here. However, I was just trying to think of a way that we can slow the player down when coming into this drop. And uh, I need to drop down here, place a block there and get back up again. 
Alright, so now if I'm on a boat, I shouldn't be able to drop down when I go into this space. I will have to uh, stop and press the button. And I still don't fall down. Yeah, this might actually be a really bad idea. Anyway, the reason that I want to fall down like that is because I don't want the player going off into that direction very fast, as we need to teach them a lesson. Now, for each of the sections of this track, we're going to have like a different theme, a different challenge. And this one is to have our end rods actually inside of the track. So if I go in this direction, I'll learn the lesson that we can't go through them when they're like this. And if I go in this direction, then I learn that we can fit through a one and a half block gap, right? And so then it's up to me to navigate the rest of this, timing my turnings and acceleration. And then here we want to make a tight turn in that direction and then go around the corner. And you can kind of see what's going on here. Again, I really like doing this in F5. Whoa! <laughs> And yeah, then there's a bunch of obstacles, including this one right here, which brings us straight back to where we started, except we can't go through there. Then we've got to navigate through this bit. This is kind of tricky because you don't want to go all the way over to the edge, which you've been doing so far. You've been using the edges because um, otherwise you'll get caught in there. And then we drop down to the next bit. So I had glass in my inventory this whole time. If we accelerate full speed, and that might not be full speed, we do kind of drop down right in front of it. So the player might not even turn around and look in that direction. Ha. Huh. I wish I'd have thought about that first. It would have been nicer to have turned them around. And I don't think we've really got the space here to reorganize the layout. Unless the bit from above comes from the other direction. Yeah, that isn't too much trouble, is it? Although the player isn't exactly going to go over here full speed. But they will drop down facing into those ones. So anyway, I did say that we were going to create one of these. Got our flowing water going down to where there's wall here, so it doesn't touch anything else. And uh, in tribute to Nembom's tutorial, I'm going to do it like he does. You can have something as simple as that. Uh, then you go ahead and you could put a hopper underneath it to start collecting stuff, right? It's never a perfect process. Some of the blocks get missed by the hopper. Um, then you can start to automate stuff as well if you if you do a little bit of that. Is that the white right ray? Oh, I put it the wrong way around. Jeez. I figured that one out just a second ago and already forgot. So now we can put the dropper there and uh, and then stand here and it should give us some, right? Why are you not? It is. I'm just apparently oblivious to... <laughs> I wasn't even looking. I was expecting something to happen and I wasn't looking at the number in the bottom left next to the axe down there. You know what I'm talking about. So there we go. That's it. We've got a simple little machine to help us with that process. And I think what I'll do to tidy this up is maybe get rid of the zombies. Well, this thing's a little bit janky looking. It needs some decoration. It needs to be made to look more interesting, I think. And maybe have a sign on it. But right now, I'm really focused on building up there. I want to get straight back into it. So we're going to give this machine a whirl. Um, if you want to see Nembom's tutorial video, highly recommend you watch it. It's only two minutes long and it's really well put together. There will indeed be a link to it in the description box. Now, what usually happens is I say there's a link and by the time I upload this video there isn't one, right? Classic YouTuber problems. Uh, but I am making notes today. I've got a list of things to do throughout the day and on that when I upload this video there will be that link in the description box as well as the Let's Play Minecraft Together link. Peeps, I won't be forgetting. Oh, that's a hideous sight. Jeez. So let's get back to making the track. You might be thinking, X, why are you putting iron trapdoors underneath dirt? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Um, until we get our hands on some lava, which I've got in this shulker box. Because we're going to replace the dirt with lava. And when the boat goes over, it's going to set the player on fire, which will probably cause them to panic a little bit. Now, I imagine from down low, that's going to look really cool, being able to look up and see some lava there. Um, but it's basically going to be a case of dodging the lava. However, I've kind of laid it out so you've got no choice but to go through it. So I think it's probably a good idea to test this and actually see if the boat can break. Because it never broke when I was playing this other track. This idea, by the way, comes from the Let's Play Minecraft Together community. I was playing someone else's track and they put lava down like this. And I panicked when I saw it. And then I learned that you could go over it in a boat. So uh, let's try that right now. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to put the boat in to there. Um, anyway, so we go over it. We get set on fire. The boat seems to be okay. I am definitely on fire though. So it's me, not the boat, by the looks of it. And I'm the one taking damage. And the boat seems to be okay. So really, it's probably just a case of you're going to get set on fire and hopefully you don't die. So I feel like what we're going to do now is just quick updates. So the lava stuff is in place. You can see there's a little less than there was before. And you're pretty much going to hit 
most of them as you go through and get set on fire. So that one's just a little bit of fun. Um, we're also going to have it drop down over here. And now we're going to extend out over Mumbo's area. So what I need to do is kind of plan out the track so it can go over the top of this and we can build support beams that look interesting. So I'm currently experimenting with this idea of having water on the tracks and it pushes the boat but not by a lot, you can kind of breeze straight through it. So I was thinking, well, this water isn't really going to push you into an obstacle but what if the water itself was the obstacle? I mean, I'm going to hold down forward briefly here. Feels like kind of the same deal, I could probably whiz straight over this although that doesn't have ice underneath. Yeah, unfortunately that's not really making much of a difference and I wanted to use it to... I don't know what the word would be, slow down the player, I guess. Okay, we've got one potential way of using it here. Um, if you go straight through the water, it's going to slow you all the way down onto the blocks behind it. I really think it's actually just the blocks themselves and the water isn't doing very much, but it made me think of another way to use this. So depending on where these are placed, they may or may not be good, but at this point I'm thinking maybe it's not a good idea to go with the water. Here's my thinking. Um, you want to avoid that bit there, so you're going to naturally aim into the water a little bit, but if you do that by too much, you might get caught into that corner, which I kind of forced myself into there. It also pops you out of your boat if you spend too long underwater, so maybe that's a way that we could do it. I'm really not sure, and we're building high up in the sky, and I think we should just keep things simple. For the next part of the track, what we're probably going to do is just have some dodging parts using bits like this that will slow you down. So as you'll see, I'm building some massive support structures off of uh, Mumbo's base here in that bit and this bit here. And we're going to lead things over to the beginning area where I'm going to build a tower going to the top. And uh, just thought I'd share a tip with you. If you're like trying to figure out are you level with something, going to place these blocks in the right place. Well, if you press F3 and look at the facing line, um, the third number is your height. So if that's at around zero then that's directly where we're looking at. Now the player is two blocks tall, so one, two, and that means if I put that there, it is now parallel to the one on the other side. So there hasn't really been a massive amount of space up here to work with. I don't want this thing to become too large. This is the uh, beginning of the track now, and it's going to be free wide, and it's going to come from the tower over there, which is what we're going to build next. Um, but this is it, it's kind of tight, like if you go too fast you hit one of these corners, if you whiz around here you might get caught in this bit and have to turn around. That's generally how I'm thinking and then there's some other challenges here like having these things in the way. Although what I was trying to do here was make it so that if you didn't go slow and take the right corner you'd sort of fall into one of these pockets. And I was building it in reverse because we're building the track in reverse and I was thinking about it that way. And I realise now that this is now a perfect opportunity to have one of those little pockets again. So if you come around here too fast, you might end up going into here. I have not built a feather farm this season of all things. Uh, whenever I need to write a book and quill, <laughs> I end up exploring for chickens, which is what I'm doing right now. Hi, sorry. Well, I've got plenty of feathers to sort me out for now. And uh, the view of this area, looking pretty interesting from this side, right? I like this here. It definitely needs a little bit more work. Some bone mill chucked onto it and maybe a tree or perhaps just mushrooms on top of it to kind of fit with the area. Uh, anyway, we've got a little space over here with a wall. I'm going to put my book and quill into uh, this for tracking high scores and then we'll throw up some signs as well. Okay, it's kind of worded to fit it into three signs. Um, Asuma's Ice Boat Race is a one-player time trial against the clock. Race down the course in a boat to see how fast you can navigate the obstacles and challenges. Time yourself and write your score. It should be pretty obvious that you write it in the book, right? And I have a little bit of a problem sometimes in my mind trying to think of all the things someone who doesn't know what any of this is is going to think but hopefully they will take the time and it should be pretty straightforward right there's like a starting line up there a starting line down at the bottom and it says to time yourself so it should I believe explain itself somewhat and while I've been hanging out in this area I have uh, been picking up on a list of little jobs that need doing and things that I want to do around this area so at the beginning of next episode we'll probably come a going to come straight back here and uh, work on this project and I will actually race it as well myself and time myself and see how good I do. Um, anyway, I mentioned two videos in this in this video, the Let's Play Minecraft Together and the Nembom tutorial. They are linked in the description box if you want to go check them out after this one. Uh, but that's it from me, so leave a like if you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you soon. So ciao for now. Bye bye.